Listen to part of a discussion in an art appreciation class. The professor is discussing cubism. Cubism. Cubism had its origins in France in 1908. Pablo Picasso and George Braque, who were living in Montmartre in Paris at the time, are said to be the founders of the movement. This new form of art was considered to be avant-garde, new and experimental, and it turned out to be a very influential art movement that revolutionized painting and sculpture in the 20th century. Some have even said the movement was the most influential movement since the Italian Renaissance. What does cubist artwork look like? Well, the objects in a cubist painting are broken up and then reassembled into an abstract form, and the object is shown from multiple angles. And well, it was using geometric forms to express ideas. Some art critics thought the pictures looked like a bunch of little cubes, and that is how the name cubism came into being. How did Picasso and his friend, the other painter, come up with the idea of cubism? Let me explain the beginnings. While Picasso was in Spain in 1906, he painted a picture of a female and made the picture's surface look like broken glass. The female's face had very sharp and angular lines. Picasso was trying to paint the woman from all angles and directions. His picture had no spatial depth, and her face was shown as almost a mask. African art, as well as Greek and Spanish art, all had influences on the way Picasso portrayed this woman. So, when Picasso and Braque began working together two years later, they began by trying to develop this style of painting. And the first phase of cubism was called analytical cubism. Because the pictures showed objects which looked as though they were working against each other, and the art showed densely patterned surfaces that were mainly monochromatic. The analytical cubism pieces also had a lot of surfaces with incomplete directional lines. What about later stages of cubism? Were the paintings in the same style? The second phase was called synthetic cubism, and this phase began in about 1912. In this phase, whatever was drawn had superimposed parts. For example, a lot of different objects were brought together to create new and different forms, and sometimes things were even pasted onto the canvas. Really, the beginnings of collages. Some of the things that were pasted on the canvas were brightly coloured items, like scraps of advertisement and wood. So colour was now being reintroduced into cubist art. Also, they varied their paint applications and used sand to texturize the works and combs to make ridges and lines. Picasso also used a lot of dots to show differences in spacing and suggest transparent planes. But what kind of a background did Picasso and Braque have that got them into the style of painting? Picasso was Spanish and Braque was French, so I am not sure how everything came together. Let's talk about each man's background so that you can understand the development and the timeline. I don't understand what you mean by timeline. I thought cubism began about 1908. Well, it did. That's about when Picasso and Braque began working together. But I mean the timeline of their lives and the art styles they were developing. Picasso had begun painting by the time he was ten years old, and he was admitted into Barcelona's School of Fine Arts when he was fifteen. When he was seventeen and eighteen, he made several trips to Paris, and in 1904, when he was nineteen, he moved there. He liked the Bohemian district in Paris, and many of his early paintings were of people in the dance halls of the district. As he painted more, he began to use a lot of blue paint, and his work showed a lot of poverty, misery, and the ugly side of life. So you're telling us that this is why Picasso has a blue period of painting. Is that the same reason Picasso has a rose period, because he used rose-colored paints in his pictures? Exactly. And when Picasso and Braque met in Paris, they teamed up and began the cubist style painting. But let me tell you a little about Braque too. Braque was born in an area close to Paris, and he became a house painter. His father was a decorator and house painter, and Braque was going to follow in his father's footsteps. Then he moved to Paris to study painting, the fine art of painting. He liked bold styles and brilliant colors, and he liked painters whose painting forms were loosely structured. Well, was he older than Picasso? My guess is that they were about the same age. Braque was a year younger than Picasso, and he moved to Paris a couple of years before Picasso. 
Brecht liked Cezanne's paintings, and you probably remember that Cezanne used some distorted forms and different perspectives in his art. So when Brecht and Picasso met, they had each been developing a similar style painting. Brecht used a lot of rectangular geometric shapes and neutral colors, and his paintings looked both flat and three-dimensional. And Picasso was painting in somewhat the same style. They teamed up and began working together, and developed an artistic movement which transformed the world of art. Now get ready to answer the questions. You may use your notes to help you answer. Number twenty-four. What is the discussion mainly about? Number twenty-five. Where does the professor say cubism had its origins? Number twenty-six. What are the phases of cubism? Click on two answers. Number twenty-seven. According to the discussion, what are features of cubism? Click on three answers. Listen again to part of the discussion, then answer the question. This new form of art was considered to be avant-garde, new and experimental, and it turned out to be a very influential art movement that revolutionized painting and sculpture in the twentieth century. Some have even said the movement was the most influential movement since the Italian Renaissance. Number twenty-eight. What does the professor mean when she says this? This new form of art was considered to be avant-garde. Listen again to part of the discussion, then answer the question. So you're telling us that this is why Picasso has a blue period of painting. Is that the same reason Picasso has a rose period? Because he used rose-colored paints in his pictures. Number twenty-nine. What can be inferred about the students? Listen to part of a conversation between two students. Little Sib Weekend. Hi Sam, are your sister and brother coming down to campus next weekend? No. Why did you ask? Oh, I just thought they might be coming for Little Sib Weekend. Oh, I guess I don't know what it is. Really? Well, it's a really fun weekend. Yeah, maybe you'd better tell me about it. Glad to. We have it every year. It is a special weekend the university sets aside for sisters and brothers to come to campus to visit their college student brother or sister. And if you don't have a younger sibling, then you can invite a younger cousin or other relative. Well, if they do come, what do we do with them? I mean, where do they stay and eat, and is there anything planned for them? Oh goodness, yes. There is a lot going on during Little Sib Weekend. Well. Tell me some of the things so I can see if they might be able to come. Okay. First, they come on Friday night or Saturday morning. They sleep in your dorm room. Since you have a brother and sister, find out if your roommate siblings are coming. If not, then see if you can use the other bed in the room. And then you and your roommate can sleep on the floor or sofa. It really is fun for the little kids. What about meals? Oh, they go through the cafeteria line just like we do, and then the program for the weekend. You know, it's the weekend for the all-campus bike race. Well, the kids love to sit in the stands around the bike track and be with the college kids to watch the race. And in the morning before the race, there is a welcome session for all the little brothers and sisters. The session is in the school auditorium, and the school makes a really big thing about their being on campus for the weekend. Well, it sounds like they would have a good time. But what do they do Saturday night? And what about Sunday? On Saturday night, the university has a dance or sock hop for all the sibs, and so they can get to know other kids and look forward to seeing each other at next year's Little Sib Weekend. The time on campus really goes fast, and then they usually leave after breakfast on Sunday. It really is a special weekend for the little kids, and since you are a freshman, your brother and sister will make friends they will see each year for the next three years. If I call mum, she will ask me what kind of clothes they should bring. Can you give me suggestions? Oh, nothing fancy. Just stuff like we wear. 
Well, I should probably call home between classes and see what is on their schedules. You know they are so busy with their school activities. Yeah, I would do that right away, and then they can plan. And you can talk to them and invite them. If your mom says they are free, then the invitation should come from you. It makes it even more special for them to be invited by a college student, even if it is their big brother. Thanks, Lisa, for explaining everything to me. I am going to call right after class. Great. I hope they can come. I know my little sister will enjoy meeting them and being with them for the weekend. Now get ready to answer the questions. You may use your notes to help you answer. Number thirty. What does Lisa ask Sam? Number thirty-one. What does Lisa say about Little Sib weekend? Number thirty-two. What examples does Lisa give about things that will be happening on campus? Number thirty-three. What kind of clothes will the Sibs need to bring? Listen again to part of the conversation. Then answer the question. Well, I should probably call home between classes and see what is on their schedules. You know they are so busy with their school activities. Yeah, I would do that right away, and then they can plan. And you can talk to them and invite them. If your mom says they are free, then the invitation should come from you. It makes it even more special for them to be invited by a college student, even if it is their big brother. Thanks, Lisa, for explaining everything to me. I am going to call right after class. Number thirty-four. What does Lisa mean when she says this? If your mom says they are free, then the invitation should come from you.